Last time on Progression of Meta series we covered all changes that Genshin introduced through version 1.0 to 1.6. If you haven't watched that video yet, I highly recommend doing it. Today we are gonna cover Nazuma patches and let me tell you there was plenty of interesting stuff. So grab a cup of tea, take comfortable position, relax and enjoy. On 21st of July 2021, Hoyo released first major update that added new region in Azuma. For the first time since 1.3, they once again released two new 5-star characters within one patch. This time it was Yoimi and what's more important, probably the most awaited character since better test Ayaka. Stakes were high as expectations of community were incredibly huge. Thankfully, Hoyo were able to match them, as not only Ayaka was comparable or even better than Ganyu and Hutao, but also did it in fairly unique freeze team. After playing around with Ayaka, Yaka teams for a bit, people realize that more often than not, you do need sustain thanks to Freeze. Best candidates for available spot ended up being Rosaria or Ophil Ganyu due to insanely strong resonance and some additional damage. Since Ganyu was already one of the most popular characters in the game, it only boosted Rosaria by quite a bit. Naturally, Yoimiya did get outshined by Yaka, but she also wasn't all that bad. She was first range auto attacker, so there wasn't anyone to compare her to, and thus community took a while to figure out her team. Many different variations were played, but unfortunately every single one fell just a little short in performance to top tier DPSs. Biggest reason for that was her absolute inability to deal any AoE damage, which was crucial in Abyss back then. Since 2.0 was so overwhelming in content, many tend to forget that it was also released patch of Sayu, though Sayu overall wasn't very memorable, since she was very, very bad. Out of 6 anima support, she was the second worst, only able to surpass anima traveler. But she could roll, so she ended up in many players' exploration team. Last thing worth mentioning is the release of Emblem and Shiminawa the main. Emblem was a crazy upgrade to already very strong sub DPSs, so burst heavy DPSs like Sunny or Sinchi solidified their best spots. 2.1 continued the trend and also got two new 5-star characters and on top of that infamous free alloy. Two normally released characters were Kakomi and Raiden Shogun, whose performance is hard to undervalue. She quickly replaced any other driver in national team and very soon after was claimed as best character in the game. For better or for worse, her hypercarry performance wasn't that impressive, but national team with her in the lead was easily the strongest in the game. Even though it used all of the best sub DPSs, many people played it, especially it helped lower level players as it was extremely easy to pilot. Because on the same patch they released catch, people didn't even need to find another weapon for their Raiden. And those who decided to go for her signature just gave catch to Sanling, once again making their national stronger. All of that together with massive ad campaign made Raiden's banner became the most selling in Genshin history and even now it still stays in top 10. On the contrary, Kakomi that was released immediately after took the spot among three worst selling banners. There were several reasons for that and her situation was pretty much the opposite of Raiden. Raiden. She really wasn't popular as she barely appeared in Arkham Quest and the fact that everybody spent their savings on Raiden didn't help at all. She was extremely weak as shields still heavily dominated over heals. Her main upside big AoE Hydra application was only useful in one team. And that team was Ayaka Freeze, which arguably saved Kakomi's banner from being complete failure. Speaking of complete failure, Aloy was exactly that. Aloy didn't have any support capabilities, very awkward DPS kit and extremely small multipliers. Of course, she could still be carried by her team and for example was a male driver for selling, but there were many characters that do even that much better. Many people really wanted to find her a proper use, but every single one of them eventually had to give up. 2.2 was pretty slow patch that didn't add anything new besides 4-star character Toma. He had the interesting shield that synergized with normal attacks, but alas wasn't even close to Jean Lee or even Diona. Some people did try him with Yoimiya, Diluca, Hutao, but not finding any significant benefits, everyone just kept using the ones they had built. No new discoveries either happened during that patch, and Hutao with Child that got reruns didn't change their position in the tier list. As mentioned before, very boring and empty patch from perspective of meta. In 2.3, Genshin finally added long-awaited double banners. Unfortunately, it didn't mean more new characters, but instead more reruns, which was also very good. New characters in 2.3 were Ido and supporting him Goro. He was third character that primarily scaled off defense, and Goro buffed exactly that. First of all, very niche Goro of course did help buff Albeida and Noel move to a higher tier, but since there weren't many teams using them, it barely made a difference. Ito, on the other hand, was pretty decent, despite having probably the worst element for main DPS. 
In many ways he was very similar to Eula, he did output a lot of damage himself, but no one else in his team did. This as usual led some people to misjudge his real strength, but most people learn from Eula experience and put him alongside second tier DPSs. Apart from new characters, 2.3 also released new domain with Husk and Clam sets. Husk once again buffed even further previously mentioned Albeida, Noel and of course Ido. Clam on the other hand didn't really buff anyone. On paper it was pretty good for Kokomi, but Kokomi already could play Mealyleaf and barely appeared in any teams. Other healers also preferred a different set, but there was one exception. And that exception was Chi Chi. Due to her excessive healing she could constantly max Clam's damage, though it did require her to play on the field. Since Chi Chi is not a DPS and couldn't be used in any teams as support, it did form some weird Chi Chi centric team, but it wasn't even close to be called meta. 2.4 was the patch with second lantern right that brought us new Leo character Shenhe. She was an amazing buffer for cryo DPSs, but alas there were only two good ones, Ayaka and Ganyu. But the fact that she was niche let Hoyo make her even stronger than any other pure support. She single-handedly brought Freeze Ganyu back to meta and this time firmly secured Ayaka's best DPS spot. She wasn't as great against many targets, but covered biggest problem of Freeze teams, single target damage. Unexpectedly, hyper carry Freeze Ayaka Ayaka just destroyed Danny Abyss and people that skipped her were heavily regretting. Shenhe wasn't the only niche support released during that patch, another one was Yunjin. They kept pushing normal attack package in hopes that Yoimiya would rise in popularity, but Yunjin was not enough. Yoi to play Yunjin had to give up either Sinch or Bennett, which effectively didn't make any difference in final damage. Starting from 2.5 patch, a big part of development team was put into designing new region, so all of the further patches were small and barely had any content. But they still tried to release at least one new character every patch. And 2.5 was a release version of maybe the most simped character at the time, Yae Miko. Alas, she was Electra, the element which reactions were barely better than Geo. Despite that, her popularity was enough for people being happy that they could just finally play her. Her kit was slightly better than Fischl's in single target and had almost no difference an AoE. On top of that, the only team that had Electro in it was Taser that also didn't benefit from Yai at all. Yai became third tier sub DPS that was not recommended to pull for power. 2.6 finally completed Kamisato family and released Ayato. Barely anyone thought that Ayato would become playable character, so no one really expected much. Which was great because Ayato was almost the same as Child, but even a little bit worse. At first he was tried in hyper carry team, since we already got a solid package supporting normal attacks. Alas, his personal damage even buffed by Yunjin wasn't very good without consolation, so eventually many put him as Xiaolin driver. Team with Xiaolin of course did perform pretty well, but once again even worse than with Child so he was claimed as third tier DPS. 2.7 introduces Yelan and Cookie that are now known as some of the best characters, but things back then were very, very different. Cookie, similar to Yai, suffered from having Electro as her element, and similar to Kakomi from having Hila sustain. She basically combined the least popular traits of her role, so she was hardly even tested. Yelan, on the other hand, was found being very similar to Sinchu, and while she did offer noticeably more damage, she did lack protection. Many people were very hesitant about getting Yelan until somebody had a great revelation. Why not just play? them together. That put a beginning to double Hydra teams that till this day are some of the best single target damage teams. Mostly it affected Pyro DPSs that obviously already played Sincha, such as Dilu, Kli, Yoimiya and especially Hu Tao. Hu Tao's best team was still weird double Geo and trading Albeda to Yelan couldn't be a better deal. Once again top DPS spots got reshuffled and Hu Tao became the best one surpassing everyone else. 2.8 effectively was a filler patch that barely had any new content as it was the last one before release of new region. Only new character was Hazer that had some interesting mechanics and surprisingly for a 4 star was pretty solid. But his spotlight was stolen by first rerun of Kazuha. People were basically begging to give them another chance and when opportunity arrived they went crazy. Nothing really changed as Kazuha still wasn't a big upgrade over Sucrose on paper but he was extremely more comfortable to play with. All the casual and not so casual players learned how much better his grouping is and won't be able to ever go back. And for today that's it. Next time we are gonna cover Sumeru, which was the most influential region because of release of Dendro. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like and subscribe to not miss next part. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day.